All right, this time around, we're going to talk about loops, and this little guy, I guess, is going to help. Or not loops, uh, control constructs in general. Um, so that's going to include loops, but it's going to extend much more beyond just that. Control constructs are, you know, your bits of code, the part of the actual syntax of the language that typically... It doesn't necessarily have to be, um, it can be part of a, like a framework that you utilize as well, but typically part of the actual syntax of the language that you, um, that you use to things like con various conditions or to repeat the same thing over and over again. And pretty much everything is based off of that. Uh, just, you know, can combine them in interesting ways, but, but pretty much everything is that. Uh, that being said, there's a fairly decent amount to talk about here, but it's generally pretty straightforward. One thing I will need to point out is that these various control constructs can be divided into two categories, statements and expressions, and this is actually super important. When necessary, I'm going to talk about them. Um, when necessary, I will add the specific thing I am talking about. So if statement versus if expression, those are different things. So what what is the difference? A statement is an individual thing that does not return a value afterwards. Kind of like a procedure in ADA. It executes, the next thing executes, the next thing executes, and unless they're passing val values between each other through like in out parameters, so, you know, some kind of global that, that exists, um, even if it's thread local or routine local or whatever, that, that's, that's still, uh, you know, the shared state, um, then no information is passed between them. Um, doesn't sound like there's much significant there, but the big difference most programmers will immediately recognize when using a statement versus an expression is that you can use an expression to assign something because, again, something is returned out of an expression. So, you can, if you have if expressions in your language, assign a value to the result um, to the result of that if expression. Okay? This I don't know if I want to say is the major difference between them, but it is it's this this matters. It varies a lot depending on how your languages work. But oftentimes, statements are much more limited in where you can use them, whereas expressions are not. That being said, in the languages, there are certain languages, C Sharp and Ida are not them at all, but there are certain languages where everything is an expression and you make something a statement by not caring about the return at all and just ending it with a semicolon. That approach is super useful. There are some complexities for managing it inside the compiler, but um, it's not too bad. But that, that approach is super useful. So as far as ADA and C-sharp, how do they stack up? We'll cover some other notable things later. As far as if goes, you know, your if then, if else, if else, if else, all that crap. Is that right? Is that right? Both of them have if statements that are completely identical. You know, I'm not really going to be talking about syntax. I don't really give a shit about the minor syntactic differences and arguing that, oh, well, semicolons require less typing, therefore it's better, or, oh, well, keywords are more clear, therefore it's better. Those are subjective things. I'm caring about 
what the actual implications are for the code that is written. And honestly, considering templates exist and tab completion and tons of other things, there's really not that much actual typing. T-tab gives you then. Shift. So, uh, curly bracket gives you the curly bracket. It's, it's really not that different. So, one thing C-sharp has that's rather convenient is the ternary operator. Now, being an operator, this is part of an expression. So, this is essentially C-sharp's um, if expression syntax. Ternary operator, however, is rather limited. Um, until target typing is implemented, it, 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 there's a bit of coercion that has to happen at times. It's rare as all fuck, though, so you typically don't need to worry about it, but the, that is a thing you need to be aware of at times. Mm. Generally not something you want to involve in an expression, but you nested ternary operators become a huge problem to read. Um, typically speaking, you should just write a function in that instance and use the function call instead of the nested ternary operators. But it is something to, to keep in mind. Um, because of the very simple nature of the expression, um, because anything inside of it is just another simple expression, uh, typically just the value that it's going to result to. Um, you're very limited in what can be included inside of a ternary operator. Um, again, typically it's just going to be the value. So any kind of more complex logic, it's, it's going to be really difficult to put in there. Um, again, that's sort of justified in that you should probably be just be using a function in that instance and return the thing that you need because function calls can be used in expressions, so yeah. Um, method in the .NET world, but this does apply to Ada as well, because Ada has if expressions, and they're more powerful and useful, rather useful in certain situations. Um, I do particularly like how uh, you can do the things like constant assignment and then with an if expression to get different constants depending on certain conditions. Um, Ada constants are noticeably different from uh, .NET constants, so that's that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, constancy in Ada has to do more with the value never changing rather than just being like some kind of macro expansion kind of thing. Kind of like read-only in C-sharp, actually. A read-only field is very similar to an add a constant. But even then, there's some differences. So anyways. Um, if expressions are definitely more powerful. You do have to be using more modern versions of an Ada compiler to utilize them, but honestly, by this point, pretty much anything that's even remotely worthwhile should be supporting Ada 2012, so you should be able to get them. Um, you can nest much more complex expressions inside of them, which can be handy. However, again, you should probably be using a function call at that point. So their nice level of sophistication, the syntax, you really don't need to learn new syntax. You put the thing inside of um, parentheses, which is the norm for expressions anyways, and boom, you just write it out like your normal if statement. I do very much appreciate the syntax of that. I, I know I said I wouldn't be saying too much about that, um, but it's a discoverability and consistency thing. With a ternary operator, you need to learn entirely new syntax. That's where this differs. I'm not 
going to argue that one form of consistent syntax is better than the other form of consistent syntax. But when you've got one language that ha tries to keep it as a consistent syntax and another that introduces a new syntax, the one that keeps it consistent is a clear winner there. Similarly, you have another construct, the switch case thing. It gets different names depending on what language we're talking about, but it's, um, in a way, a more sophisticated if-else-if-else-if-else-if then kind of, uh, kind of construct. You get a single value, a single expression that you know, we'll evaluate to a, a single value that you then go through a bunch of cases that get uh, compared against. Now, it's complicated because the exact mechanism behind this works varies. And I do appreciate how added does not require you to put a break at the end of every single one. Um, that being said, it is actually sometimes convenient in the C world where you don't have to put the break and you can fall through to another case because there are times you want to fall through to another case and it's not just clever tricks. Like I think it's called the Jensen's device, but I might be mixing up my, my things. Um, but there, there's a situation where you actually want to do that um, in some very bizarre code, but uh, very useful kind of thing. That being said, uh, C sharp requires that break statement or some kind of equivalent, I'm done this case. So it operates pretty damn similarly to Ida's in that regards, but the mandatory break is superfluous. It's typing that I really don't want to do. Similarly, in Ida's, there is the convenient side of being able to put multiple things in a single when clause. In C-sharp, much like in C, you have to have multiple cases that actually do fall through, but since there's no statements inside of them, it's considered valid. That should make a lot of sense. That's how you get the multiple cases with the same uh, code that gets executed. You have multiple checks and just fall through. Uh, C-sharp's a little bit more transparent about what's actually going on, but I definitely appreciate a syntax for it a little bit more. It, you can cluster things together in the same case. Uh, and even use ranges, which is super lovely. That being said, we're about at the end of where Ada is actually winning. C-sharp switch case statements have a number of benefits. It's very easy to do go-tos between these. That's essentially C-sharp's solution to fall-throughs. But it allows cleverness, like instead of falling through, actually going up to a case above where you are currently at. Um, this is not something you're going to want to do very often. That is a very complex code construct and is similar to a lot of the uh, clever trickery that you wind up seeing with C and uh, switch case statements. That I like having the option. And I like how you don't have to do anything to not use that option. You get the reasonable, good, I'm not using this default. Uh, you clearly have to opt into it. And a lot of people don't even realize that you can just write go to and then the case label. But yeah, you, you can do that. Another major thing 
uh, C sharp in an effort to introduce a lot of the things that F sharp has introduced, which is super bizarre. I don't understand why Microsoft is doing this. You'd think you'd want F sharp to specialize in that shit and then use the appropriate language for the appropriate task, but I, whatever. Uh, it's sort of becoming clear that they want C sharp to be the only language that they really do because they pretty much abandoned Visual Basic and um, F sharp really isn't getting the support that it should be concerned about the, the the future of other languages but still the the CLS compliance is there and that's my major reason for using it the um, big thing introduced that was originally done with F sharp not in the .NET world originally with F sharp not F sharp was the first language to ever do it that was not the case is uh, pattern matching. C Sharp utilizes pattern matching through its switch case statements. And there's a bunch of clever things that you can do, especially now um, with the C Sharp 9 introdu introduction. When that when that's, gets finalized, there's going to be a lot of very clever things that you can do. Um, but e even at the C, C Sharp 8.0, uh, there's, there's a ton of incredibly useful stuff. Polymorphic uh, switches are absolutely fantastic. The idea behind that is you pass it a variable that is a class specific, specifically, not a struct. Um, well, no, you can do a struct and then switch on the interfaces. But either way, you can switch on any of the things that it inherits from. That covers much more broadly than what I was saying. Oh, excuse me. Actually, with that in mind, you could even pass it in something that's just typed as an interface and then just switch on other interfaces that interface depends on. Neat. But the idea is that each case is a type that the type obviously has to be able to become. It'll yell at you if it could never actually hold true. Um, but then you can also pass it a new name. That name is then used to reference that same uh, value, but now through the type that you just matched. So no casts, no coercions, nothing. You already know because you already checked that it is that type, so you can now reference it exactly as a type using the new name. This is super useful. Simplifies a lot of code where you would want to do such a thing, which is actually quite often. And uh, I'm so glad that exists. They're going to be, and to an extent already are, um, introducing a lot of more sophisticated situations, adding certain clauses on top of that. Like, if this is this other type that also requires a certain condition to hold true, let the one of the fields within this uh, object also has this specific value or this value within this range or whatever, then there's a specific case. And you can see the level of sophistication this has. This is very useful for um, doing these operations, doing very complex operations, very useful for managing very complex systems. And it's all done through the same syntax, because it's all essentially the same thing. I like it. Another important co construct that I had mentioned with the switch cases, and whatever you want to call it, it's just cases, case wins, whatever. Um, it's just the simple go-to. Both languages have them, and I'm glad they do. One thing I do want to say about Edis, however, that is absolutely fucking bizarre, and I cannot believe this is actually part of the language at all. It is asinine, and I want to bitch slap somebody because of how stupid it is. Ada has two different syntax for declaring labels. That's right. See, when people criticize the language over being bloated, 
They're not wrong. The language is bloated. Because again, there's two entirely different syntax for declaring labels. And that's just asinine. In C-sharp, there's only the one syntax. There's only one thing that you need to learn, and you can use that label for in to sit that label syntax in any situation where you can put the label. That's a lot better. Next up, as far as control constructs go, would I suppose be the loop. Loops and adder are better. I'll flat out say that. But first, loops in C sharp. We've got the while loop. Nice and simple. Give it a condition, it does that. End of story. You've got the standard for loop, very C style for loop. I appreciate or having that syntax, to be perfectly honest. I, I understand some people don't like it, but there are certain situations where the syntax is useful. Uh, you know, not needing to declare a variable that exists outside of the for loop scope is handy. But you still can. The fact that each part of the for loops, you know, preamble, um, does not necessarily need to be filled in is rather useful as well. It's a very nice generalized syntax. But I still think it pales in comparison to something that Ada can do. But uh, then you've got the for each. I do appreciate how C Sharp is very clear that it's a for each and that it utilizes a different syntax from the for loop. For each makes it very clear that it's an iterator and that it's going to do every go through every single element. And that what you do inside the loop body is for each element. Ada, on the other hand, has a generalized loop. And you can add specific things to it, but it's still always a generalized loop. I appreciate how generalized that is, actually, because together with some other unique things that Ida has, it becomes very easy to create some rather unique loops. So you can put the exit condition, or even just an exit statement, wherever in the loop. And it is essentially just a go-to to the you know, position after where you would jump back up, uh, but it's clear syntax in using a go to, of course, which is good. You always want that when you can. The ability to put an exit wherever or an exit when and then whatever the condition is, is super convenient. Putting them wherever gives you basically any loop you can possibly have. That being said, there are some high level loops that already exist. While Ada lacks a for loop, it does still have the while loop. You can give it a condition and it will go and do that whole thing. As for a do while loop, that's pretty easy to synthesize just by putting the exit when condition at the very end of the loop. Now it'll just go through the first iteration regardless, check the condition, and then if that condition doesn't hold, it goes back up. There is the for in range loop and the for in collection loop. Both of these are for each loops, but it's confusing. For in and for of, probably not the best of choice. Or am I mixing up my languages? That's always a possibility. JavaScript does that. And it's super fucking confusing. I regularly forget which one I actually meant to write.
No, I confuse those in Edda, too. So it's both. As far as iterators go in the for each loop syntax, C sharp wins, but otherwise, I think Edda has overall the better loop system. It's more, I mean, a lot of the high level loops still exist, but you have more freeform options. You can add exit conditions all over the loop if you want to, honestly, if you need to. I've had to at times. That's helpful. Now, I'm running off memory here. I've only done this once, so I may be wrong. But it is, it's possible, this is a definite thing, it's possible to label loops in Ada. And that's, that's useful. There's situations in which you need to break out of a specific loop, but not the most immediate loop you're in. That, that's a thing. Um... As part of the exit clause, this is the part I think I think I remember right. As part of the exit clause, you can between the exit and when, or even just after exit and then just it's done. There's no clause. You can put the label name, and it'll exit out of that loop that you specified. If you want to do something like that in C sharp, you have to use a go to. Dedicated syntax makes it a little more clear. Having the loops labeled is nice. You have, I mean, shit, it even describes the intention of the loop. What is the loop? That's something I often comment in the .NET world, but the label, I mean, technically is the comment. That's handy. <laughs> As I mentioned, pretty much Every other control construct is just those in certain combinations. In fact, some of the ones mentioned, like the while loop, is very obviously an if condition and then the loop. The if being inside the loop, actually, at the very beginning, but it's, you, you, you get the point. I'm not going to consider the control constructs that are part of Edis tasks as being actually control constructs because they are fundamentally just those. And they're only applicable in the CSP world. Talking about those would largely be frivolous because it's the same as with the video I already did on concurrency. We already know, we've already covered how those are different. Sure, I might not have mentioned the specific control constructs that are associated with CSP, but that's not the point. The point was that with Eddie, you only have CSP. And since there's nothing to really compare there that hasn't already been compared, there's no point in going into that. You see where I'm going? Hopefully. Everything that's already had to have been said, as far as that goes, has already been said. And as far as non-standard control constructs, or you know things that aren't part of the language itself, the syntax of the language, but they are part of the standard library, or are things coming soon? Parallel operations. That's a big. Ada22x is getting parallel loops. Parallel loops, the idea is that you write them as similar to as a normal loop as possible, but it just has parallel at the beginning. The operations will be attempted to be implemented in parallel. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to deal with that. I'm not sure where they're at as far as that proposal goes. I haven't been tracking at a 22x very closely. I just know it's um, something that they're working on. 
Regardless, though, you write it exactly like a normal loop, but the operations happen at the same time. If certain operations, for whatever reason, take longer than others, you don't actually resume control at the end of the loop until the entirety of the loop is done. Okay? Ida has dedicated syntax for this. Dedicated syntax is always preferable. C Sharp, the .NET world in general, really, uh, implements this through the parallel st uh, st um, class. It's a static class that provides methods which provide this behavior. But there is the you know, parallel for, parallel for each, that kind of stuff. They feel certainly more procedural than really part of the language itself. But it's I still gives you access to the stuff, but it's certainly not the syntax that you ideally like to be using. Whatever. But, um, Another form of parallelism. I mentioned it a bit with the intrinsics, but the quick primer on it. Another way to do things in parallel is to have them just happen under the hood. Have them as intrinsics that just happen. C sharp allows that with certain types falls back to reasonable behavior. And it doesn't, but could. The standard library would have to code for it. Would have to install specific runtimes on specific architectures, but you certainly could do it. As far as other languages go, though. F sharp, I tend to mention a lot in this for obvious reasons. F sharp doesn't have a whole lot to say, especially as C sharp pattern matching is catching up to F sharps. There's not really going to be a whole lot of a difference. The syntax is certainly different, and F sharp syntax is almost sort of better, but funky to read because, of course, functional programming does just. It's not. It's great on the fingers, not on the eyes. And again, tab completion. You don't really need to worry about great on the fingers because tab is always just right there. You really don't need to type that much. There is a major place where this is significant, though. Seed 7. I believe I've mentioned in one of these previous videos, I, I do not remember at all which one, but in seed... Oh, it would actually just be in the introduction. In seed 7, however, it is possible to introduce entirely new syntax into the language itself. That is significant, because that means seed 7 can easily have the single best control construct for every single situation. That's a big deal. Parallel loops wouldn't need to be part of the language itself. Because they can be added in by the parallelism library that somebody else writes. Special control constructs that are useful for, you know, uh, text processing, which tends to rely on control constructs that are unlike anything ever used anywhere else could be implemented and not have everybody else pay the burden of it because they exist within a library that somebody depends on, that somebody writes, that is, again, not part of the language itself. You get them when you need them, but they're simply not there when you don't.
that really wins out over anything else because of the sheer power of it. Essentially, the syntax is just a fourth form of subroutine. The syntax is just another name for a function or procedure or operator. That's a clear winner. There's probably a few isolated cases that I could talk about but didn't, but you largely get my point. We've covered any of the major stuff and my ideals as well. So that's it for this video, guys. Have a good one.